The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, a local Health Mart pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our guest, Holly Spencer Truman, foster care recruiter for Ohio Guidestone. Joining us by phone is Matthew Rizzo, CEO and president of A Renewed Mind, a subsidiary of Ohio Guidestone. Good morning, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning to you. Opioid addiction has been a serious and growing issue in our country for years now. And the face of the epidemic usually is of those who are addicted. However, there's another side of the opioid addiction crisis and substance disorders in general. The children of those who are addicted or who overdose. As the opioid crisis spreads, it has forced more children into foster care and exposed many to severe trauma. Today we're going to talk about these children and the organizations that help them. We'd like to remind our listeners that our program is available on our podcast that you can find in the app store of your favorite smartphone. Look for medicines, look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs. If you, have, if you have questions you'd like addressed today, you can post them up on our live Facebook feed, or you can give us a call at 330-450-1480. So, welcome to both of you, Holly. For those who don't know, tell us a little bit about Ohio Guidestone and your legacy of commitment here in Ohio, because I understand the organization just celebrated some milestones. Yeah, it sure did. Hey, um, Ohio Guidestone recently celebrated our 155th birthday on March March 4th, and then, of course, 10 years here in Stark County. Uh, Throughout that time, we've played many roles within the community. At the beginning, we were taking care of children without parents. Um, As time went by and the needs of the community shifted, though, we adapted and became a residential treatment center known throughout the state for our expertise in caring for children with complex high needs. Then we diversified the services we provide as a behavioral health agency and recently began substance use disorder treatment services in response to the opioid epidemic, which is where Matt and Renewed Mind come in. Um, Today, at the core of our identity, we're known as uh, lead providers for behavioral health services. We help tens of thousands of people each year in 34 counties across the state. That includes entire families, children, adults, everyone. We're especially excited about Ohio Guidestone's impact here in Stark County because we grew from serving just 45 individuals in 2009 to 500 plus now in 2018. So as we began here, we only offered one program, but today we have uh, nine programs allowing us to really meet the needs of the community. Okay. So Holly, you first and Matt second. Tell us a little bit about your roles with the organization. Sure. I um, am the foster parent recruiter and trainer. Um, Really what that means is I'm pretty much the front door. I'm out there trying to get the word out about foster parenting. I am receiving phone calls and inquiries with folks saying, you know, I I really want to consider doing this. Can you help me understand what that means? Um, I'm training and educating folks um, along the way and then nurturing the folks that do finally get licensed um, because it's a hard job and they need folks behind them supporting and nurturing them. Um, Additionally, I always like to say that I am also a foster and adoptive parent. I have three beautiful children that um, came to us through adoption and through foster care. So I know from personal experience, you know, this road traveled. Very good. And you, Matt? Sure. So I'm the uh, current chief executive officer at A Renewed Mind, uh, where we provide behavioral health care services for you know, folks that struggle with mental health and addiction issues. Um, but, you know, in July, actually this past July, uh, Renewed Mind, we had the opportunity to become a wholly owned subsidiary of Ohio Guidestone. So Ohio Guidestone is our parent company. I'm really excited about that. We've had some opportunities at a Renewed Mind, um, and I've had the opportunity and privilege to oversee programs that include providing medication-assisted treatment in jails, um, being able to help pregnant moms who are addicted to substances. Uh, so we're doing a lot of things at a renewed mind uh, to treat mental health and addiction. And my role has been to oversee those programs and services uh, in general operations, if you will. 
Okay, Matt, there's some staggering statistics about the impact of opioid epidemic. The CDC reports that 91 Americans die every day from overdoses, and it affects all age groups, ethnicities, and not just urban committees, communities. Excuse me. Can you give us any insight into this problem and why it has spread so quickly? Mm-hmm. So if you look at a lot of the research that's out there and the data, back in the 1990s, uh, there was a growing trend where uh, the medical field or medical professionals were prescribing more and more uh, painkillers in the context of opiates, so morphine, oxycotton, that kind of stuff. And so as the prescriptions were prescribed for sports injuries and chronic pain, uh, there was more and more medications, uh, opiates in particular, that were in our community. And so uh, people became uh, addicted to uh, Oxycontin, Percocets, Darvocets, uh, those kinds of medications. And uh, soon enough, you know, we started to see some deaths related to overdosing. Uh, law enforcement got involved. Public policy got involved. Uh, and in the early 2000s, if you will, uh, we began to see uh, the crackdown on pill mills. We began to see prescriptions being monitoring uh, from state departments. And so the prescription medications uh, began to dry up a bit. And so uh, people then turned to heroin and then quickly turned to fentanyl. And when you look at the potency of fentanyl, if you looked at a penny and you looked at the head of Abraham Lincoln, which is on the penny, uh, that's the amount of fentanyl that if a person consumed, uh, they could overdose and die. And so we started to see an uptick in deaths related to opiate overdoses. Um, and that's really how this epidemic has hit. And in 2016, 2017, uh, Ohio saw its greatest increase when it came to deaths related to opiate <clears throat> use, more uh, specifically fentanyl when that's involved. Okay. What do we mean when we say substance disorder? Mm -hmm. So when people talk about substance disorder, it could include substances uh, like cocaine, alcohol, opiates, um, cannabis, benzodiazepines like Xanax and Valium. So substance use disorder, uh, it it includes an array of substances. Now, generally, um, when it comes to being classified as a disorder, there are really two buckets. Uh, The first bucket would be substance abuse, where a person would consume a substance in amounts and or with methods that are harmful. And so drinking, binge drinking might be a good example of substance abuse. But when substance abuse becomes uh, more specifically a disorder, you usually see the signs of dependence. And so if a person becomes uh, chemically dependent, if you will, on a substance, uh, you usually see signs of tolerance where it takes more and more of a substance to uh, have a person achieve the high they're looking for. Uh, if a person stops taking that substance, you'll see them going to withdrawal. Uh, often people have a very difficult uh, time quitting taking that substance uh, in spite of grave consequences that they're facing. And usually you'll see people who are uh, dependent on a substance, spending more and more time running after that substance. And so that's usually where uh, the two buckets fall when it comes to a substance use disorder. All right. Is it true that the CDC classifies Ohio as one of the top five states to be hit by this epidemic? Uh, as far as I know, I know that Ohio over the past few years has been ranked uh, either one, two, or three, as far as what you just described, we have too many uh, folks still overdosing and dying related to opiate use, and so we are right up there. All right, well, tell us how Ohio Guidestone is making an impact in helping people. Uh, so, Ohio Guide, so Ohio Guidestone, in conjunction with the Renewed Mind, uh, we're doing a tremendous amount of work to make a positive impact uh, to fight substance use disorders and mental health uh, disorders as well, um, there's probably some things that we've noticed to be effective to make that impact. Uh, number one, we realize that uh, kids, youth, adults, families, they need to access care quickly. Secondly, when they get there, 
We know that they need quality care. And finally, you know, let's, let's not uh, forget the prevention part of it. If we can get out in front of preventing uh, a future substance uh, abuse or future substance use, um, prevention is important. So here's what we've done. Number one, we have hired and continue to hire qualified staff who are trained, highly trained in combating substance use disorders. Two, or secondly, um, we have opened up multiple offices uh, to be able to get people into uh, care as quickly as possible. And the third thing I'd say that we are doing to make an impact is that we have gotten creative with the delivery of care. And so you will find staff from Ohio Guidestone in the renewed mind, uh, in the homes of people that struggle with addiction, working alongside law enforcement, in the jail providing care, in the hospitals providing care, uh, primary care offices. We're working with doctors that have primary care offices to provide addiction and mental health treatment. So we're really trying to build any on-ramp to treatment uh, that folks can, can access to quickly access care and abate uh, addiction and mental health disorders. Okay, Matt, it appears that addiction rates are rising, and along with that, so is the number of children flooding into the foster care system as a direct result. And I have to admit that's something that I hadn't thought a whole lot about before we talked about this program. Can you talk about the correlation between Ohio having twice as many children in foster care today as it has licensed foster parents? So, as you know, we talked about earlier, Ohio has gotten hit really hard with opiate uh, addiction uh, the number of deaths that have resulted because of that. And that holds the hand of the families that uh, are affected. When a person struggles with an addiction uh, disorder, especially opiates, I mean, opiates is very deadly, obviously, when you're um, misusing um, a prescription med or you're abusing heroin or fentanyl, um, you know, people die. And so, obviously, if they leave kids behind, Someone has to take care of them, and that's impacted our foster care system. You know, also with addiction, you can't put it in a box and put a lid on it and not expect it to uh, leak out and and affect the family system. Uh, And so when people begin to use um, heroin and fentanyl or misuse prescription medications, uh, the more use, the more criminal justice involvement, uh, the more neglect that takes place, and our kids are affected by that. And often you'll see children's services get involved and have to remove kids or have to place them with other family members. And so the two, they go hand in hand. And we've seen that in Ohio. Hmm. Polly, can you tell us about the uptick in the number of children requiring foster care services means to agencies like Ohio Guidestone? Oh, sure, sure. Um, you know, perhaps on the on the more obvious side of that question is the idea that you really have to start doubling down on your recruitment efforts and um, working on getting families in the door that are willing to take on children that have been affected and had to be brought into care for their own well-being. Um, um, but perhaps in a more real-life um, answer to that is, you know, the real need to put a, a real face on the addiction and a real face on the children that are being affected by um, the opioid addiction. So every time I see or, or think of when you see a story on the news of somebody that's passed out in a car, somebody that's being revived at a, on a bench at a library somewhere, um, and ask yourself, you know, are, are there children involved? Are there children at home that we're not seeing? Um, you know, because it's very likely that there are. You know, um, for every person that you see on the news that's overdosing, it's very it, there's the potential of having a child that is waiting at home um, for a parent that may not be coming. Okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy.
You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Are you sick and tired of waiting at the big chain pharmacies for your prescription? We've all been there. You aren't feeling well, and you go to pick up your prescription, and you're told to come back later. At the Medicine Center Pharmacy, you don't have to wait. We can fill your prescription in 15 minutes or less, and we could even save you some money on your prescriptions. Talk to your Medicine Center pharmacist at any one of our locations in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Visit MedShopRx.com for more information. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Spring is finally here. It's time to beautify your home with stunning stained glass. Studio Arts and Glass will custom design a traditional bevel glass window or add elegance to your contemporary space. The gift shop's open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call 494-9779 for our stained glass class schedule or to make a live succulent wreath. Go to studioartsandglass.com for more information. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. A locally owned Health Mart pharmacy, whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local Medicine Center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Health Mart caring for you and about you. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking about the impact of the opioid crisis on children who are forced to enter foster care. Holly Spencer Truman from Ohio Guidestone and Matthew Rizzo, CEO of A Renewed Mind, are with us this morning. Have a question, post it on our live Facebook feed or call us at 330-450-1480. So... How does the change in the type of foster care families needed with this, with what's going on here, and what type of training and preparation do they need to go through in order to deal with the children coming out of these situations? So with Ohio Guidestone, you have to take a minimum of 46 hours of something that's called pre-service training. Um, mm-hmm. That's uh, classroom hours where we educate you about everything from child welfare to um, childhood development to how adverse how trauma adversely affects uh, children. So you go through a minimum of 46 hours worth of training, and then you spend hours with a home study worker, an assessor who comes to your home, um, and it's very dialogue-driven um, time to get to know families, to really get to know families, to make sure that this is something that they feel like they can do. Um, um, as well as for us to make sure that they are safe people for us to place children with. So it's fairly rigorous, and it's rigorous on purpose. You know, the first exercise we do in class number one is I have um, somebody in the class show me a picture of one of one of their children, one of their grandchildren, and I say, 
um, you know, unfortunately, let's suspend our disbelief and um, say something's happened to you and this child has to go into foster care. What do you want to know about the family where this child's going to go, where your your little bitty girl is going to end up? What do you want to know about them? And the responses are pretty telling, you know, um, which helps folks understand why we need to spend hours with you and make sure you're a safe person and that you're well trained and that you can um, take care of our kids and not traumatize them more. Um, so it's pretty rigorous, but it's rigorous for a reason. So what impact do, does being removed from a home due to substance abuse uh, have on these children entering foster care? And how, how do you address it? Sure. Um, I, I don't know. There's a, a, a buzzword out there anymore. If you've ever heard of ACEs or Adverse Childhood Experiences, um, there's a lot of talk on that. I've seen a TED Talk where someone talks about adverse childhood experiences. Um, usually when we talk about those, we're talking about maybe witnessing domestic violence, having a parent that is an addict, um, um, being abused or neglected in your childhood. But one of the traumas that we add on to an adverse childhood experience is that of being brought into care. Um, the act of being removed from your parents can be extremely frightening, can involve police and social workers and um you know, you being whisked away from, um, yeah, people that are abusing you, but the only people that you know and love. So you've been removed from them. You go very likely to a hospital to be triaged. You get asked a lot of questions. Um, and if we can't find kin or a known person to this child to step up and take care of them in this moment, they then are placed in the home of strangers. And what have we done with kids their whole lives? We've asked them to be wary of strangers, mm -hmm. and now strangers have been given authority over them. So this is traumatic to kids. This is something that um, adds to what, uh, you know, the, the developmental blows that we know um, occur when kids experience trauma. Okay, so a child lives in a family like this and sees this, um, what are their chances of being uh, becoming uh, abusing drugs, abusing whatever, whatever? Well, you know, speaking of adverse childhood experiences, there's a lot of study out there that suggests that there's a great correlation between the number of uh, traumatic kinds of experiences you've had in your childhood and the likelihood that you'll go on and have a lot of negative um, outcomes one of them being substance abuse. So, um, you know, people smarter than me could perhaps speak to the chemical correlation or whatnot, uh, or genetic correlation, but <clears throat> just having experienced trauma will cause folks to have any number of outcomes, including things like heart disease and um, liver problems and whatnot, but alcoholism and or substance use and abuse is one of them, is one of them for sure. And think about why you use abuse and abuse any kind of substance. I mean, often it's to numb and to escape uh, the memory or re-experiencing things that have traumatized you to begin with. So, mm -hmm. makes some sort of sense. Time for a second break. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. 
Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Spring is finally here. It's time to beautify your home with stunning stained glass. Studio Arts and Glass will custom design a traditional bevel glass window or add elegance to your contemporary space. The gift shops open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6. Call 494-9779 for our stained glass class schedule or to make a live succulent wreath. Go to studioartsandglass.com for more information. Have you seen our new arrivals at the Half Off and Hot by Store in Louisville? A great selection of spring clothes for men, women, and children. This is a great time to stop in the Half Off and Hot Buys to see what's new. Lots of spring toys, and it's getting close to Easter. You'll see a lot of Easter Bunny stuff, like eggs, baskets, and lots of Easter decor for the season. So get over to the Half Off and Hot Buy Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where our quality choice products are still buy one, get one free. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, at halfoffhotbuy.com. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about the opioid epidemic and its impact on children who are forced to enter foster care. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. All right, Holly, why don't we talk about the average age of a child entering foster care and the typical length of stay for those who may be interested in fostering a, pa- a child? Sure. Sure. Um, you know, you look at statistics and the average age says it's seven-ish, you know, seven-ish. However, um, whenever I talk to anybody on the phone, I tell them I have two speeches. You know, you have sort of the statistics and the averages of years past, and then I have to really stop and say, but the opioid epidemic has put the foster care world on its ear. You know, I don't know that we can say the average age is seven anymore because we have kids coming in from zero to 18 you know, how is this falling apart right and left? And, and um, you know, it's, it's hard to, I think, uh, distill. Um, so how long, what's the typical length of stay? Uh, the law reads that they, uh, birth parents get one year plus two six-month extensions in order to fix what's broken, per se. So whenever somebody says to me, you know, who's a foster parent, how long might this child be with me? I generally say, you know, count on a turn of the seasons. Um, And if it's longer than that, so be it. If it's shorter than that, then, you know, bravo for the family and the child, because our first goal is reunification. We don't want them lingering in foster care. We want them to go home to their parents or to someone related to them. What does Ohio Guidestone look for in a foster parent or family, especially when it comes to children with unique emotional or social needs or those who could be medically fragile? Well, um, (laughs) do you know, I I was just at a conference in Atlanta and had the opportunity to sit in a room with about 100 other recruiters, and we all just looked at each other, um, hoping somebody had this magic answer of who makes the perfect foster parent and where can we go find them. uh, what I would say that I have found is the most successful parents um, are ones that have a good support system. Um, foster kids, through no fault of their own, have a lot of needs, um, reactions to the trauma they've experienced. They have appointments. They have needs at school. They have um, things that you just can't anticipate where you really need s- people in your corner that can help you pick up the slack. We need foster parents that show a bit of resiliency themselves. You know, it is not uncommon. One of the beautiful things about, I think, humanity is people go through things themselves and think, you know, I'm on the other side of this and maybe I can help someone that has experienced something like this. So they come and they want to be helpful. I need to make sure that they've managed their trauma first Mm -hmm. um, because you have a child that comes into your home and perhaps discloses to you that they've been sexually abused or something like that and that was your experience and you fall apart because they've said that to you we have a problem 
Um, so I need people that are resilient. I need people that have a good support system. I need somebody that has a car, <laughs> you know. So um, there aren't a lot of stipulations in terms of, you know, there, there are no stipulations about age, race, creed. Um, you can be single. You can be married. You could be 21. You could be 65. You know, um, we need people that are willing to stand in the gap with a child and say, I'm not leaving. You, mine is the only home you will have until you are ready to go back home to your parents. You touched on some training bef- or already. Mm-hmm. Um, what type of support or ongoing training do you provide for foster families mm-hmm. who care for these children? And like you said, I'm I'm guessing that they also need a strong support system in place. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, one of the things I like um, so very much about our agency is that everyone carries a phone, <laughs> you know. So you have a crisis in the middle of the night and your worker is picking up or our nurse is picking up or our director is picking up. So we have um, 24-7 support services that our foster parents can access and that is is really important because anybody that has a child knows that the blues come right about the time you're putting them to bed. Um, You know, so we've got that. We have a tremendous amount of ongoing training where we bring in um, folks that are uh, obviously well-versed on lots of topics that are relevant to our our parents, um, trauma and its effects, um, specific disabilities, um, things about the opioid epidemic and whatnot. we also have a support group, um, a potluck support group, um, where folks come. Um, we have a private Facebook group where, where they support one another. We will match you with a foster parent. If you feel like you need sort of a mentor in your life, we will make sure that happens. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't brag about um, what we call our genie team. Um, we had an intern that worked for our agency that had a heart for foster care but didn't think that she could become a foster parent. She ended up rallying a group of folks at the Strongsville United Methodist Church who also said, I don't think I could be a foster parent, but I know they go through a lot and could use some support. Mm -hmm. So our Genie team does everything from uh, child care, transportation to visits with their parents, bringing a meal if a foster parent is sick or or had something, you know, a surgery or something. Um, We call them the Genie team because if you're my age and you've seen Robin Williams animated um, Aladdin and he played the Genie, he'd he'd pop out of his lamp, right? And he'd go, poof, what do you need? Poof, what do you need? Poof, what do you need? Mm -hmm. Um, So our Genies have really filled a gap um, in supporting our foster parents. They're like one more great layer we've got wrapped around them. What about your return rate to their parents? To their parents? Their real parents, yeah. You know, somebody asked me that the other day in pre-service, and I'm going to be frank with you. I'm really, I'm not up on the, the statistic. I know that it uh, that kids aren't going home as much as they used to, um, and I can't tell you statistically what that means. We need sure. somebody smarter than me to give you a percentage, but I know that you know if if you think about what these parents are being asked to fix, if you've got an, uh, if you're addicted to the point of needing your children removed, it's very likely that you're going to lose a whole lot. More a lot more when your children leave. You may lose income, you may lose your home, you might lose yeah. your job. So you have to fix all those things before you can get your children back. You have to get sure. clean and sober, you have to establish housing, you have to have an income, you have to take care of your parenting skills and maybe take ang- anger management, all kinds of things. In two years, I, I can't stay in a diet for two weeks, you know? <laughs> These people are being asked to make tremendous change and it's hard to get all that done. Um, so so is is the mix of alcohol and drugs one of the major issues here in the in the original parents or is it one or the other or isn't there really any characteristic i really think it's anything you know and and it would it would be unfair to classify every child that came into care as coming into care because of alcohol and drug abuse but it would be fair to say that about 80 percent do come into foster care as a result of some fallout because of addiction. Um, sure. Of course, kids come in for other reasons as well. A parent with mental health issues, somebody who is impoverished and not able to do what they need to do to care for your kids. Hmm. Kids don't come into care because their parent is poor, but they come into care if they're living in a car, you know. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's it's huge. So, what's the landscape look like here in Stark County for fostering? You know, I... I um, anticipated that question, and I, I thought to myself, I'm, I'm not sure it's any different than it is throughout our state. You know, this epidemic does not discriminate. Uh, 
uh, between neighborhoods, between uh, race, creed, age, type of person, class, religion. It is everywhere. Um, now you have a city, and you have more population, and therefore you have more people that need help. Um, but <clears throat> this is a pretty insidious problem. I can't imagine bringing a child into this world yeah. and not caring for this child. I yeah. just can't imagine that. Well, you know, I have three kids that would say the same. I have three kids that would say the same. So what steps could someone take if, if they're interested in fostering? And, and who do they call? Email? <clears throat> what's the website? That sort of thing. Um, okay. So our website is www.ohioguidestone.org. There is a new inquiry button. You just click on the button, and it has you fill out a bit of a questionnaire, which really helps me um, then have a conversation with you about some of the requirements. If you don't want to do that, and you just want to call me directly, I, I am the person you would call. It is My desk number is 440-260-8319. Okay. Um. <laughs> Many people enter into foster care strictly with adoption in mind, but that's not the necessary end, I don't think. Is that correct? Oh, by no means. Okay. I, and not that I'm not sympathetic. You know, I, I said at the beginning of the show, I'm an adoptive parent, um, and the you know rising rates of infertility is another show. Um, mm. I, I think that it's really important. Um, every person I talk to, I say, you need to understand that reunification with somebody in their family is our ultimate goal, that we're in the business of finding homes for children, not children for homes. Hmm. Um, you know, so uh, adoption is not our end goal. However, I should say that if kids aren't able to go home to their parents, that their foster parent is the first person we're going to ask if they're willing to adopt, you know, because moves hurt kids. I make people in my class raise their right hand and tell me moves hurt kids. You know, I solemnly swear I won't disrupt a child from my home because moving them one more time is going to be harmful to them. Moves hurt kids. We want them to stay in their first foster home and go home or stay put and if at all possible, um, be adopted by that family. I see. So how do you balance keeping, trying to keep families together while also doing what's best for kids? You know, um, I think it's, it's, it really strikes at the heart of the matter, you know, because to, it's, it's not hard to create empathy for children that are, are suffering. So, um, but we have to remember that there's a parent on the other side of this as well. And I said to you that I ask my families, what do you uh, what do you think we want to know about you? But I also ask them, what do you think their parent wants you to know about their child? Because on the other end of it, there's a parent panicking, saying, this family doesn't know she needs to sleep with the light on. This family doesn't know, maybe, or they've given him peanuts, he's allergic to peanuts. You know, So this other piece of, um, um, for me, my, I, I put the task before myself to create a sense of empathy for our birth parents. You know, um, just because they're an addict doesn't mean that they're a horrible person. Um, so, you know, we do a lot of work to try and A, create some empathy and B, help our foster parents um, try to be role models, you know, and, and model some better parenting techniques and whatnot. So, um, you know, in the midst of all of that, there's also concurrent planning going on more at the county level where if they see that this is perhaps going sideways and this child isn't going to go back home before the courts are even saying, you know, terminating parents' rights, social workers are behind the scenes trying to make some plans for this child's future. All right. Hey, Matt, how is Ohio Guidestone different when talking about the breadth of services you offer as a behavioral health organization? Well, I think what sets Ohio Guidestone apart is just the ability to provide uh, a complete care path. In other words, you know, today people look for uh, nonstop shopping and one-stop shopping and can I get everything all under one roof? And Ohio Guidestone offers that. So when you look at the care continuum or you look at the care path, if you will, uh, we offer prevention all the way through uh, detox services, um, inpatient rehabilitation, recovery housing, outpatient care, peer recovery supports, so that, you know, the bookends on what we offer, the, the bookends are pretty spread out. So you can get everything under one roof. Um, there's a lot of wraparound services and support. Um, and I just want to kind of throw in there, too, 
You know, about 68% of our folks who struggle with a substance use disorder have a co-occurring mental health issue. And so we're also able to provide that mental health support as well. And sometimes that involves some type of medication intervention, whether it's um, Suboxone or Vivitrol or psychotropic medications. And so uh, we offer medical services there as well. Um, and let's not forget forget the vocational part. A lot of our folks find that uh, engaging in work is meaningful and it helps their recovery. And it's a sober support activity that's productive. Uh, and so there's some vocational services that are offered at Ohio Guidestone as well. Okay. You're listening to Health Matters with Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you seen our new arrivals at the Half Off and Hot by Store in Louisville? A great selection of spring clothes for men, women, and children. This is a great time to stop in the Half Off and Hot Buys to see what's new. Lots of spring toys, and it's getting close to Easter. You'll see a lot of Easter Bunny stuff, like eggs, baskets, and lots of Easter decor for the season. So get over to the Half Off and Hot Buy Store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where our quality choice products are still buy one, get one free. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, at halfoffhotbuy.com. Are you sick and tired of waiting at the big chain pharmacies for your prescription? We've all been there. You aren't feeling well, and you go to pick up your prescription, you're told to come back later. At the Medicine Center Pharmacy, you don't have to wait. We can fill your prescription in 15 minutes or less, and we could even save you some money on your prescriptions. Talk to your Medicine Center Pharmacist at any one of our locations in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Visit MedShopRx.com for more information. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about the opioid epidemic and its impact on children who are forced to enter foster care. So let's get back to the final portion of the show. Okay, Matt, before the break, you touched on a myriad of services that you offered Ohio Guidestone. Um, and I just wonder if you were able to cover everything before we had to go to commercial break or if there's anything else you'd like to add about the full breadth of substance use disorder services available to folks through Ohio Guidestone and Renewed Mind. Uh, just quickly, that if you do access services at Ohio Guidestone, I think you'll find that there is just a tremendous, tremendous amount of resources and, and wraparound care that's there. So, Okay. <clears throat> How how does a how does someone get in touch with you guys? Do they need a referral from a physician, or what's that process look like? Uh, people can call directly. Um, people can visit our websites. 
Um, people uh, at certain clinics can walk in for care. We have a number of clinics that have that offer uh, walk-in assessments. Um, you can visit a renewed mind at a renewed mind services dot org. Um, I believe OhioGuidestone dot org is another website that you can visit. Um, and so there's multiple on ramps to do so. You do not need a referral, but you can simply pick up the phone and call for an appointment. Um, or again, you know, check the website for walk-in availability. Okay. What signs should parents look for in their kids, and then what would they do to get them help? Mm-hmm. So obviously the first thing is the sooner you can get help, the better success uh, rates we have uh, and you have. And so don't wait, right? So that's, that's number one. Even if you start the ball rolling with your primary care doc, Uh, and have that discussion because often they can be a wonderful resource to get people connected to treatment. Some of the signs and symptoms you should look for, and, you know, I get asked this question a lot, and I tell parents, you know your kid, you know your children better than anybody. So look for changes in behavior. Are grades slipping? Are your kids changing their friendships and who they hang out with? Are they isolating? Are they sleeping or eating more or less? Um, is there a loss in interest? So in other words, things that used to make your, your son or daughter happy, do those things no longer pique their interest or they don't find any type of pleasure or satisfaction in those things? And so when you start to see those changes, it ought to send up some red flags. And, and when it comes to addiction in particular, uh, when there are missing valuables or spoons even become uh, missing because a lot of folks who will abuse uh, opiates, heroin in particular, will uh, use a spoon to kind of melt down the substance and then later inject it. And so you want to look for those kinds of things if money is missing or valuables. So, um, you have a solution for all of this? <laughs> Okay. I mean, I really, we've been wrestling with this, and it's worse and worse and worse, of course, again, but we've been wrestling with this thing for years, the, the drug thing. And I can remember when many of the drug companies in the early times in my career, when they came out with a new pain reliever, they all announced that it wasn't addicting. Okay. But every one of them is addicting. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so we seem to have somewhat quelled the, the um, uh, shall we say, over-prescribing um, Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the next move? Okay. Well, I'm encouraged by what Governor DeWine has done. He's quickly gotten out of the gate by putting together, um, you know, a recovery council, an advisory council, if you will. And just yesterday, actually, he released uh, 70 recommendations, and those recommendations are multifaceted. They touch on children's services having more funding there. Uh, They touch on law enforcement and and interdiction, making sure that our communities are safe. Um, It touches on treatment, making sure that people have access to care. Uh, And again, you know, I think that um, this is going to be a community solution. It's going to take time. Um, Finger pointing doesn't help, but what does help is everybody kind of linking arms and saying, look, let's also reduce stigma because uh, you know, this is something that a person is struggling with and needs help and doesn't need to be judged. Let's get them into treatment and get them help. So um, I am encouraged by Governor DeWine's initiatives. Interesting. Okay, so pretty tight on time. Um, what's your final thoughts here, today's program? Uh, my final thought is, is that, that, you know, help is here. Uh, if you're struggling with mental health, if you're struggling with addiction, call sooner than later. Uh, folks, it would be helpful to understand that um, recovery does work, but it is a process. And often uh, people uh, relapse, but hopefully they, you know, get back up again and try. Um, and, you know, just two quick things you can do. Number one, if you have medications or prescriptions that are in your medicine cabinet that you're not using or they've expired, take them to the local pharmacy or a drop-off box or your law enforcement and get rid of them. Don't leave them uh, hanging around. And secondly, get some education around Narcan. There is some medication out there that can reverse the effects of an overdose and can save a life. And so um, just a couple of things to think about. Thanks, Matt, for joining us by phone today. We appreciate it. Yeah, very good. How about you, Holly, on fostering? Do you know, uh, I would say take a courageous step. 
give me a call, make an inquiry about becoming a foster parent. I have an evening class in Canton that is ready for you to join it. Um, because if not you, then who? Hit your phone number uh, one more time. Four four zero two six zero eight three one nine. And OhioGuidestones.org. Dot org. I look at the complexity of my life. I often have wondered, okay, my children are long gone, okay? They're out of the house, okay? <laughs> well, you could give me a call. What would happen? If I <laughs> we could step outside and talk about it right now. Thank you, our guest, Holly Spencer Truman from sure. Ohio Guidestone and Matthew Rizzo, CEO and president of Renewed Mind. Mm-hmm, thank we'd, you. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and of course our technical technical producer, J.D. Angelis, as always. We thank you listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We're a local Health Mart pharmacy caring for you and about you. Have a healthy week. We'll see you again right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC next Friday. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.